want to become the best version of yourself naturally and effortlessly in one simple NLP process, keep watching. I'm Damon Cart, this is Life Mastery Gym, and I teach people just like you cutting edge NLP processes and techniques so that you can master your life and take charge of your destiny. So if that sounds good, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis. The NLP swish pattern is one of the most popular NLP processes because it's so powerful and so simple, but unfortunately, most NLP trainers, even the big ones, teach this process incorrectly. So today, I'm going to go into how the process works and why it works so that you can experience the same kind of transformations I put my clients through. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you how to take this even deeper with some free training. If you've ever heard of the NLP Swish pattern, regardless if you've ever used it or if you've ever gotten it to work for you, let me know about your experiences in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I will respond to you. So let's jump into how to do the Swish pattern. So you wanna find some type of behavior that you wanna change or get rid of completely. So this could be any bad habits, any compulsory type of behavior like overeating, or smoking, just anything you wanna stop doing. Biting your nails could be one of them. And what you wanna do is you wanna find out what triggers that behavior, what, what makes it happen to begin with. So what triggers it? What do you see that makes this sort of trigger? Now, some people ask if I'm not very visual, will this still work? And the truth is, is that we all see images. We all see pictures in our minds. Some people would prefer to do this in the auditory modality and you can do that. I'm really gonna focus on the visual modality here. The visual is the easiest to work with. So even if you do have, or if you're more auditory or more kinesthetic, you can then shift this into the visual by asking yourself, well, what would it look like if it was an image? And it's just so much easier to work with the visual modality because you can see more information than you can hear all at once or feel all at once. So work with the visual. If you find that you're not so visual, Work on this a little bit to create more of a, of a visual sense of this, and it will serve you in other ways. So cultivate that visual modality as much as you can. So first we're gonna start off with the compulsory image. So you wanna find what triggers the behavior that you don't wanna do. So if it's smoking, maybe it's some sort of stress, and we wanna get more specific. Well, what is the stress? What is the, the trigger that causes stress? So what do you find, if you walk it back, if you think about the times that you have a cigarette, walk it back to, well, what happened just before I felt the need to, a, to have a cigarette? And then the same goes for overeating or, or nail biting. What happens right before that seems to trigger this? And you should, you should see an image of this. And what you should see is an image of you associated into it. And what I mean by associated, it's as if you're actually there seeing it through your own eyes. And if you're hearing something, you would be hearing it from your own ears. So it's like you're actually there. Even though it's a past memory, you're sort of re-experiencing it all over again. And this is the nature of compulsion or even a phobia. We feel like we're fully associated into the experience as if it's actually happening. And this is why we have a sense of not being able to do anything about it, being powerless to change it. So we wanna find what that image is. So if it's a stressor, find out, okay, what do I see that causes me to then feel stress that then makes me feel like I want to smoke or to eat or bite my nails. So you're gonna take that image and you're gonna get clear about it. And it's usually gonna be right there in front of you because it's associated. Then let that go, and what you wanna do is you wanna make an image of your ideal self. So this is the you who has already solved this issue. Not only that, this is the you who has solved any problems or any issues you've ever had. Remember, this is ideal, so you can, we can be perfect about this. Now here's the really important thing about this image that a lot of people miss. This ideal self needs to be in no particular context and not doing any particular behavior. It's just an image of you, and it could be like a green screen behind you, it could just be a white screen behind you. And this is the image of you who, when you look at this image, you just have a sense that this is the you who has solved any problems, not just this one. And you wanna make it so compelling that it feels like it kinda of wants to suck you into the picture, but you don't wanna go into it. 
So how do we make it compelling? Well, in general, not everyone, but most people, when you make an image brighter, more colorful, and bigger, it tends to be more compelling. Now, there is a point of diminishing return on this. If you make it too bright, you make it too colorful, and you make it too big, of course, you're not gonna feel it as much. It can be too overwhelming. So find that place where it's just perfect, what we call optimal, not maximum. So what is the optimal compelling components of this ideal you, this ideal self, so that when you see it, you, you feel compelled to go into that image, to become that person, to become that ideal self. Now, why is it important to not be doing any particular behavior and to not be doing, not, not have this in any particular context? Well, if you chose a specific context and you chose a, speci a specific behavior, when you swish the compulsory image, you would immediately feel like if it was a behavior that you were swishing to go in and to do that other behavior. Now you might be thinking, well, that's a good thing, right? Like what if I feel compelled to smoke, but I want to swish that behavior to going and exercising? Well, that does sound really good, but there's a problem there. What if it's the middle of the night and you wake up and you feel like smoking? You're not going to go exercise. It's just not going to happen. Most likely it won't happen. So then you're going to break this pattern and you're not going to follow through with it. And the same could be for eating. What if you feel the need to eat in the middle of the night or, you know, if you feel the need to eat in the middle of the night, you're, it's so much easier to go and eat than it is to go and work out or do any of the other behaviors, behaviors that you might have swished. So it needs to be practical. And the best way to make it more practical is to make this image of yourself, this ideal image of yourself, generalize as much as possible to all behaviors. So now you have choice. Now you have options of many behaviors that you can use because you haven't chosen a specific one to swish. So it leaves you open to, to choosing any behavior that's better than whatever the compulsory one is. Now, the same thing with context. If, we, if you swish an image of your ideal self and that ideal self is at work, then you can probably break the compulsion at work, but when you come home and you're in a different context, it's not going to work. Why? Because this, it wasn't done in that context. So we leave this open so that it can generalize to all contexts and all behavior. Now, if you want to try a cool little exercise to see exactly what I mean by this, imagine something that you do pretty well, like say it's writing or say it's giving talks or teaching Whatever it is, something that you do very well. Now, if you were to imagine yourself doing that, there probably already is a particular context in which you imagine doing that. If you're a teacher, you probably see yourself in a classroom. If you are a writer, you might see yourself at your office writing or in your bedroom writing. If you're a painter, same thing, you're in a, you're in a, in a studio. So imagine that. So imagine seeing yourself doing whatever it is that you do very well, and then sort of cloak the background cloak everything or maybe see yourself on a stage with no that has a black background so there's no particular context here what happens when you do that now you can even stop the video and check that out but i'll go ahead and i'll uh, this is a spoiler alert when you do that you will have a sense that you could do this anywhere why because you've removed the context which means this will generalize to anywhere now this actually might not be something you want to do because you might not want to do particular behaviors in any context but in general, you'll get that sense of like, oh wow, I can do this anywhere. And that can, be, that can serve you quite well. So that's why we want an, an image of yourself, the ideal you with no particular behavior and in no particular context. We want this to generalize most widely, as widely as we possibly can. And I also teach something called transforming yourself. It's called the self-concept model. And this was created by Steve Andreas, who's also the one who pointed out to me how I was doing the swish pattern wrong. And it was this ideal self with no particular behavior and no particular context that he realized that there was something very powerful about this that goes into the identity. And this is how we create our sense of identity. Now, I created an, an entire training on this. Um, I have videos about it, and I will be in opening, opening enrollment for this training in early November. If you want more information about that, I'll put some in the description below, or you can get onto my email list and you'll be notified when I'm putting um, opening enrollment for that training. I really drilled down on the ideal self. So hopefully you really understand the importance of the ideal self, how to optimize it, how to make it compelling, and make sure you leave out the behavior and the context. So we got the compulsion image and we got the ideal self. So this is in front of you. 
you want to see this, the compulsion image up here, we'll use the other hand, and you want to see this image of your ideal self down here. Now there's different ways to do this. The easiest I've found is what I'm about to show you is you see the compulsion image here, the ideal self image down here, the ideal self image is small, the compulsion image is big, and then you as, quick, as quickly as possible swish this image up, the ideal self image up, and expand it, make it grow, make it big, make it bright and colorful just like you had imagined it, and swish down the compulsion image so that it's dark and you can't really even see it anymore. All right, so you're gonna swish up like that. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to practice this about seven to 10 times. This is another thing you need to be very, very careful of. A lot of students make this mistake. When you're resetting the images to swish it again, a big mistake a lot of students make is they swish them back up. Now, if you do that, what are you doing? You're creating this yo-yo effect so that when I see the compulsion image and I go, ooh, I want whatever that is, a cigarette, food, whatever, and suddenly my ideal image switches up and I go, oh, no, I don't want, to, I don't want that compulsion. I want to be this person. And then if it automatically switches back up and you see the compulsion image, then you're going to go for the compulsion. So be very careful. You switch the ideal image up, you release the images, let them go. You can blank out the screen entirely. And then you start back with the compulsion image and the ideal image down here. And then you switch and then let, the, let everything go, let it clear out, reset the images and do that seven to 10 times. So when you do that, what you're really doing is you're breaking that compulsion pattern. So when you break that compulsion pattern and you do that with the, and the interference being your ideal self, now you've got a vision of where you wanna go. You have a replacement here. You're not just trying to not do the, the behavior that you don't wanna do. You're moving that completely out of the picture and you're giving yourself a vision to move toward this ideal person who I want to become. And once you do this and you program then this into yourself, you won't even have to think about it. And you will find whatever behaviors that will align to this ideal image of yourself. And it doesn't matter where you are in whatever context, you will be able to make this happen. Now I wanna stress the power of this ideal image of yourself because I use this all the time. I don't just use this when I do a swish pattern. I don't just use this when I'm trying to get rid of some sort of comp compulsory behavior. I use this with myself and I use this with my clients all the time because what most people are lacking is an ideal image or vision of where they want to go. And without that, so if you're solving a problem and you're focused on solving the problem, but you don't have an ideal vision of where you wanna go beyond the problem, chances are you're gonna stay stuck in the problem because all of your focus and attention is on the problem. No, you wanna think beyond the problem. Where do you wanna be beyond it? Who, what is that ideal you who you want to become? And then this becomes, it's almost like a gravitational pull, pulling you through the problem so that you deal with it, you solve it, and you keep moving forward. So you can create an ideal image of yourself without even swishing and just hold that ideal image in front of you. This is much, much more powerful than a vision board. And in fact, I mean, if you think about it, a vision board is something that stays in the corner of a bedroom or something like that. This having this vision of yourself, of who you want to become in front of you at all times, whether regardless if you're conscious of it or not, is going to be far, far more powerful. You have a tendency to move in the direction of who you want to become, no matter where you are and no matter what you're doing. If you'd like to learn more NLP techniques, I've linked a video to this one. If you click the corner right here with you see the eye, there's another video called Neuro Linguistic Programming Techniques You Can Use Immediately. I explain other NLP techniques that are very simple and easy to use and that you can use immediately. Just one more thing I wanna say about the ideal self image is a lot of people will have role models or people who they model for success or for whatever it is that they wanna create in their lives. This can actually be problematic because when you model someone else, if you're not careful, you can pick up some of the negative aspects or the negative sides to that person, pieces of that person or that person's personality that you don't want to pick up or that aren't useful to you. So you wanna make sure you leave those out. And in order to ensure that you do that, this it's great to become your own role model, become your own person who you're trying to become, your ideal self. It's much easier to do that 
than trying to become someone else and it will serve you much, much better in the long run. For those of you who would like to take this even deeper and you wanna learn more NLP processes and techniques and actually take this to a little more advanced level, I've created a four part video series. I've put the link in the description below and I've also put it in the comments below. Just click that link and you'll get access to the first video and then you'll get access to the next three over the next three days. If you like this video, make sure you click like and let me know what you think or what your experiences are with this pattern, the swish pattern. And while you're down there, make sure you get your hands on on that free four part video series. Also, if you found this video helpful and you know someone else who you think this video could help, make sure you share it with them. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.